Kapoor Gallery's 2021 exhibition, Incarnations of Devotion, contains more than 40 Hindu works of art. Here are a few of the highlights. Seated on a lotus flower at three quarters view, the Lord Ganesha is depicted here carrying an elephant goad, a rosary, and the god's preferred sweet, Ladu. As the remover of obstacles and the god of beginnings, this image of Ganesha would have been the opening folio of the Gita Govinda series from which it was taken. The lush and detailed landscape of the present composition is representative of that which pervades and defines the entire series. Artists from Goulaire often utilized a technique of burnishing the backside of the painting in order to deeply embed the bright colors into the paper support, evidenced by the still vibrant palette of this 18th century painting. Ganesha's father Shiva stands here in a fluid tribanga, donning a short veshti secured with a multi-banded belt, punctuated at the center with a modest kirti mukha, or face of glory resembling that of a lion. Shiva's face is perfectly symmetrical and equally composed in countenance as in modeling, conveying his transcendent power in a less explicit manner than his clearly defined third eye. He holds a battle axe and a leaping antelope in his upper hands, symbolizing his dominance over nature. His primary hands project gracefully forward to the position where they once held his characteristic bina, a long-necked and pear-shaped lute. According to Hindu practice, music has the power to lead one to moksha, or liberation, and the present manifestation of the god Shiva embodies that notion. While this manifestation of Shiva is described as a player of the veena, it is worthwhile to note that there are no sculptural examples, including the actual instrument. This striking bronze sculpture would have been commissioned for a temple shrine, but fitted for public procession for all to experience a sighting of the divine, which can have a tangible impact on one's life. The majesty of this Hindu goddess is perfectly captured by this finely decorated Pahari composition. Her beauty, as her name indicates, transcends the vast Tripura, the three demon citadels, within which she is believed to have defeated many demons for she is the transcendent form of the supreme Devi, Parvati, who rules over the divine triad of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. She is thus known as the queen of all kings and rulers. Her identity is revealed by her red skin and her forearms, two of which hold an elephant goad and a lasso. Her identity is corroborated by a small painted image pasted within the border atop the folio, depicting the Parvati Yantra, a six-pointed star with an eight-petaled lotus surrounded by a square with gates in the four cardinal directions. Parvati, or Uma in the Tamil language, appears here in a different form. She sits in the posture of royal ease with one leg retracted and the other hanging relaxedly off of her throne. Her seated posture suggests that the sculpture belonged to a larger group referred to as Somaskanda, which describes the divine family constituted by Shiva, Parvati, and Skanda, which served in a central role in a Shaivite temple centuries ago. While the present sculpture, like most figures of its size, was commissioned for temple worship, the group of three portable bronze images were also processional such as indicated by the holes fit for poles seen here, which enable worshippers to carry the divine figures into the streets for festivals where all can experience darshan. The ancient Indian epic poem, known as the Ramayana, offered by Maharishi Valmiki, tells the stories of Rama, the seventh avatar of Vishnu and a legendary king of Ayodhya. He is a prominent figure in the Hindu pantheon and particularly important within the Hindu tradition of Vaishnavism, wherein Vishnu is exalted. Rama's life and journey is one of perfect adherence to Dharma, despite a harsh series of tests he endures, such as his own exile and the kidnapping of his wife Sita. In the present two contiguous illustrations, number 99 and 100, the demon king Ravana appears in his palace, surrounded by his wives and the daughters of gods and other divine creatures he's previously captured. Before him stands Sita, the wife of Rama, whom he has imprisoned. His fortress at Lanka is guarded by his animal-headed minions. Both folios are represented of a playful style associated with the Rajput principality of Mewar. Here we can see Rama, pictured as the ideal man, just as the Maharishis described him, fear-striking and beautiful. This marvelous bronze image from Orissa certainly captures Rama's divine qualities, as he appears only semi-human, with his perfect proportions and complete physical symmetry, 
The artist evidently took great care in matching each minute detail from one side to the other. The figure's pronounced wide eyes, prominent nose with a sharp and straight bridge, and full smiling lips, all beneath a discreet singular brow line, point to the arisen origin of this image. Equal attention is paid to the backside of this sculpture, which reveals an additional two small flowers adorning each of Rama's ears, finely incised strands of hair, and neat tassels fastening each piece of jewelry he wears, a few of many fine qualities of this masterwork of Aristan bronze casting. <laughs>